So recently we have surpassed 5,000 subscribers and I want to give a big thank you and shout out to all of you who have subscribed to the channel, give these video a like, who have just watched the content on my channel in general, have commented and also asked many of these great questions that I'm really responding to you guys on. So anyhow, thank you so much for all these engagement and let's continue to build this awesome community that we have. All right, that being said, what I want to do is focus on the X-Rite i1 devices in this video. So there are a few new revelations that have come to me in the past week or so about these devices. And what I want to do is offer a comparison between all of these three colorimeters that they have and just kind of give you an idea of which one may best fit into your workflow. Let's get started. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. These three devices are calorimeter. They will calibrate display and projector only. x rite also makes another class of device called a color spectrophotometer. Those devices will do display projector calibration, will do scanner and paper profiling, along with being able to use to read color patches or color swatches from any type of medium. If you want those kind of extensibilities, then you would have to look at their color spectrophotometer device. But now let's focus on these three colorimeters. I have the x rite i1 Display Studio, the i1 Display Pro, and the i1 Display Pro Plus with me. If you quickly take a glance at them, they pretty much look all like the same device because they are all in the same enclosure. But if you look closely on the side of the device itself, it will tell you which device you have. The x rite i1 Display Studio will have i1 Display Studio clearly written on both sides of the device. The i1 Display Pro has the i1 display moniker at the very top and in the middle you just have the i1 logo. While the x rite i1 Display Pro Plus gets the abbreviated version of the name, the x rite i1 Display Plus. So there you have it, these three versions. But how are they different? The best way to compare them is to separate this into two groups. By looking at it this way, the i1 Display Studio and the Pro devices. The i1 Display Studio is an amazing beginner to intermediary device. So if you're just starting out with color management or you just want to get a good device in general that would be able to do a good job calibrating your display, this would be the one to look at. When you start to go to the Pro devices, you start to get a lot more control with regards to the profile and the ICC profile creation process in general. Another thing I want to note about these two group of devices too is that the x rite i1 Display Studio is not open to third-party software access. That means, for instance, if you have a hardware calibrated display or if you're thinking about getting one, let's say the BenQ SW line, which is hardware calibration capable. BenQ have developed their own software called Palette Master Element. Palette Master Element will not work with i1 Display Studio. This will be the same for any other hardware calibrated display software as well. For instance, if you also have an Atomos recorder and you want to calibrate it, the i1 Display Studio will not work with that. When we move into the Pro line, the i1 Display Pro and the Pro Plus, these are open to third-party software access. So, Palette Master Element will work on this. Any other hardware calibration program will work with these devices, including the Atomos Field Recorder as well. So if you have those and you want to calibrate other devices, and you want to use other software, well, you would have to look at the Pro devices. This being said, let's talk about the software solution from x rite i1 Display Studio uses i1 Studio software. i1 Studio software is a fairly advanced display calibration software. It can do paper profiling too, but this device will only do display and projector calibrations, as I mentioned earlier. But it will do a lot of advanced calibration because at the very fundamental, it's using all of the x rite algorithm for advanced display calibration that they use in i1 Profiler. You just don't have the opportunity to go in and control all of the settings as you would have with i1 Profiler and these Pro devices. When we start to move to these Pro devices, there are a few things that you would gain from them. For instance, you can go in and set the contrast for your ICC profile. So for instance, if you do a lot of printing and you want your display contrast to match that, for instance, say a matte sheet of paper, what you can do is dial in the value for display contrast in i1 Profiler and you can create that custom profile for your display that way. The other thing that you can do too is that if you have one of their Pro Spectrophotometers, what you can do is load that paper profile and literally do a custom profile on your display using that paper profile contrast ratio but this is something that you need to own their big device too in order for you to do that. 
Another thing that you can do with this is at the end of the calibration, very similar to the i1 Studio software, telling you the white point, the luminance that I was able to achieve, and just pretty much how the calibration was done in general. With the Pro software, what you can then do is a profile validation. This is something that you can't do in the i1 Studio software. One more notable differences between the two software is display uniformity. With the i1 Profiler software, you can use these devices to measure the display uniformity across the panel. So what the program will do is just divide your display into nine grids. And what you would do is measure all those grids to determine how even your display is and how accurate the color for each different you know, grid is. This is something that cannot be done with the i1 Studio. So obviously we're getting a lot more pro features out of these pro devices. Now that we have briefly compared the software and talk about the third party software compatibility, let's look at the hardware. The i1 Display Studio and the i1 Display Pro. Both of these devices are capable of calibrating display as bright as 1000 nits, despite using a different set of software. Obviously, with the i1 Display Pro, you're going to get the i1 Profiler software that offers you more control with regards to the profile creation process. If you have a brighter true HDR display that exceeds 1000 nits, well, you want to look at the i1 Display Pro Plus. This can calibrate displays that go as bright as 2000 nits. Beyond that though, what about the differences between these two hardware? Let's focus first on the i1 Display Pro. So the i1 Display Pro are going to be the best all around color calibration device for pretty much any type of creative, photography, video, any type of other creative professionals in general. If you want good colors on your display, this is probably one of the best devices that are out there. It's have been around for quite some time, but the sensor inside is a tried and true sensor. Meaning that when x -Rite originally released this device, they have mentioned that they have used this new type of sensor that the only thing they need to do is update the software so that it can accommodate new type of backlight. And they have proven that to be true. For instance, when this device was released, OLED displays for computers or even in laptop wasn't even around. I mean, our smartphone was just coming out then. Well, fast forward to today, this is the same device that was released back then. And i1 Profiler software has been updated to support OLED. So that's just one example of how these sensors inside these devices are generally future proof. And that's something really great about them. The other thing too is that if you're a photographer, video, or in the inner creative professional in general, and if you don't use HDR feature, we're going to be calibrating our display between 80 to 120 candela anyway. We're using the lower end spectrum of the brightness of our display, and this device will do an amazing job calibrating those. So if you want a really great device with a lot of control and something that will work well for display calibration, the i1 Display Pro is for you. Now let's move over though. If you are a video professional, again, if you work in HDR and you have a display that can go beyond 1000 nit brightness, the i1 Display Pro Plus is the device that you want to consider. The other thing too is that if you are a video editor and you need to calibrate your display to BT1886 Gamma Curve, the only way that you can do that is to get the i1 Display Pro Plus. And this is just some subtlety that I found out between the i1 Display Pro and the Pro Plus recently because I was trying to look for that feature because I know I've seen it in the software in i1 Profiler at some point. However, when I plug in this device, even though if you select the Display Plus at the very beginning in the first screen, it won't give you that function because only the i1 Display Pro Plus has the sensitivity in the sensor to be able to calibrate BT1886. This being said, this device, the i1 Display Pro Plus, is also somewhat a little bit more future proof than this one. So, for instance, if in the future you plan to get a brighter display, well, obviously the Plus is going to be the better device because it will be able to accommodate that right out of the box and you don't have to upgrade the device anymore. The greater sensitivity of the Plus model also helps as well in some photography work. For instance, in the darker areas. This is going to be really beneficial, especially for shadow, darker tone calibration. It's going to be able to calibrate more precisely in those areas because of this greater sensitivity compared to the i1 Display Pro model. Now, if you really ask me, do you see the visual differences between the two? You may not see too much of the differences visually, however, the difference is, is there because of the greater sensitivity on the sensor in general. This being said, if you're planning at any point in the future to 
upgrade to a hardware calibrated display or calibrate in field record or anything like that, I will look at the i1 Display Pro or the i1 Display Pro Plus. If you don't have a hardware calibrated display, you're not thinking about getting one, and the display that you have are software calibration, whether that is external or built in, such as on a laptop or all in one computer, the i1 Display Pro is going to be the best device for you. So as we break this down here, you're going to start to see that if you need a really great device, the i1 Display Studio is an amazing start device for you to get started with color management and display calibration in general. If you want to graduate up and get more controls and features and functions, the i1 Display Pro has been a fantastic device and it still is a fantastic device today. To future-proof your purchase or if you need a few features that are i1 Display Pro Plus specific, such as HDR calibration, BT1886 camera curve for video editing. And if you plan to get a brighter display in the future, the i1 Display Pro Plus will probably be one that best fits into your workflow. If you have the i1 Display Pro now, do I recommend going out there to upgrade to the i1 Display Pro Plus? I would say if you don't really have a need for it, the i1 Display Pro that you have is an amazing device and you're going to be just perfectly fine with it. So I hope that this comparison helped you choose the device that best fit within your workflow and your color management needs. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, art is right.